Hello friends. Today we are going to be doing a Julia Donaldson story time. Um, a lot of you might know her other books, The Gruffalo being one of her most popular ones. Um, but today we're going to be reading a few you might not know. And the first one is called Charlie Cook's Favorite Book. And it's by Julia Donaldson and it's and Alex Scheffler. Once upon a time, there was a boy called Charlie Cook who curled up in a cozy chair and read his favorite book. About a leaky pirate ship, which very nearly sank, and a pirate chief who got the blame and had to walk the plank. The chief swam to an island and went digging with his hook. At last he found a treasure chest, and in it was a book. About a girl called Goldilocks and three indignant bearers who cried, Who's had our porridge? Who's been sitting on our chairs? They went into the bedroom and Baby Bear said, Look, she's in my bed and what is more, she's got my favorite book. About Sir Percy Pilkington, a bold and fearless knight, who told the dragon, Wait, I'm not quite ready to fight. You must hear this one first. And then his armor clanked and shook. Ho, 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 he, he, he. As he read aloud a joke he'd found inside his favorite book. About Rowena read a, read a lot, a very well-read frog who jumped upon a lily pad and jumped upon a log, then jumped into the library, which stood beside the brook, and went, read it, read it, read it, as she jumped upon a book. So she's already read everything she read it, she said. About an oak tree full of birds, each bird had built a nest, and they had a competition to decide which one was best. They chose an owl to judge it, and the winner was a rook, whose nest was lined with pages from his very favorite book. About a girl who saw a flying saucer in the sky, some small green men were in it, and they waved as they flew by. She tugged her mother's sleeve and said, Look, Mom, what I've just seen. But Mom said, Hush, I'm trying to read my favorite magazine. About a wicked jewel thief who stole the king's best crown, but then got stuck behind some sheep which slowed his car right down. The king dialed 999 and soon the cops had caught the crook and flung him into prison where he read his favorite book. About a greedy crocodile who got fed up with fish and went on land to try to find some other kind of dish. He went to a bookshop, and he there grew even greedier while reading on page 90 of a large encyclopedia. About the biggest birthday cake the world had ever seen, a team of royal cake makers had made it for the queen. The cake was so delicious that a famous spaceman took a slice of it to Jupiter. He also took a book. About a ghost who glided, who glided round a castle every night, carrying her head and giving everyone a fright. She kept it up till morning, then she found a shady hook and put her head back on again to read her favorite book. a cozy armchair and a boy called Charlie Cook. <laughs> so you can pause this video right now if you're in the classroom and give your students a chance to answer the question, what's their favorite book? It's so
already know. The next one I'm going to read is called Zog and the Flying Doctors. And this is by Julia Donaldson and Axel Scheffler. Same as the last one. Meet the Flying Doctors, a dragon knight and girl. Their names are Gadabout the Great and Zog and Princess Pearl. Pearl gives people medicine and pills and vaccinations. And Gadabout is expert at performing operations. Zog is good at flying, though not quite so good at landing. But Gadabout and Princess Pearl are always understanding. Bang! Ooh. Flying high one morning, they heard a mermaid wail. I've sunburned, am sunburned, and it hurt, she cried and swished her scaly tail. Oh, look at that sunburn she's got. Bang, crash, thump, they landed. The mermaid's skin was red. Pearl rubbed in some special cream and wear this hat, she said. Thank you, said the mermaid, and she waved a fond goodbye as the team of flying doctors sped away into the sky. As the sun rose higher, they saw a unicorn. He pawed the ground and whinnied. I've grown an extra horn. Oh, no. Bang, crash, thump, they landed. I'll help you, said the knight, and he cut the horn off gently to the unicorn's delight. Thank you, said the unicorn, for taking so much care. And the team of flying doctors sped away into the air. Halfway through the afternoon, they heard a lion sneeze. I've caught the flu, the lion roared. Can someone help me, please? Bang, crash, thump, they landed. And Pearl said, take this pill and do keep warm. It's terribly important when you're ill. But the lion's cave was chilly, and Zog said, fetch some wood. Then he breathed out lots of flames until the fire burned bright and good. Thank you, roared the lion. I'm feeling nice and warm. Then the team of flying doctors sped away into the storm. As evening fell, they saw a great big palace down below. My uncle's house, said Princess Pearl. Let's go and say hello. Bang, crash, thump, they landed. Pearl's uncle was the king. He didn't say hello. Instead, he said, you naughty thing. Where have you been, he thundered. You look an awful mess. What's happened to your crown? And where's your pretty frilly dress? But uncle, can't you see that I'm a doctor now, said Pearl. The king replied, princesses can't be doctors, silly girl. He told his men to seize her and to lock her up inside. Princess Pearl was furious. She stamped and stormed and cried. Weeks went by, and Princess Pearl spent many weary hours sewing pretty cushions and arranging pretty flowers. The others tried to rescue her with all their might and main, but they simply couldn't manage. All their efforts were in vain. Each night they flew to visit her and perched upon her sill. And one dark night she told them that the king had fallen ill. The king grew worse. His head was sore. His arms and legs felt weak. His skin had turned bright orange and he found it hard to speak. He called a lot of doctors, a new one every day. He groped, what is this illness? But they simply couldn't say. They didn't know the answer, but Pearl was pretty sure. It looks like orange fever, and she read about the cure. Grated horn of unicorn, a mighty lion sneeze, some mermaid scales, a little slime, and half a pound of cheese. She told the others what to get, and do be very quick. My uncle could be dying. He looks extremely sick. Away flew Zog and got about. They reached the lion's den. Bang, crash, something landed. He sneezed for them. And then... They flew back to the forest where the grateful unicorn was very pleased to give them his unwanted sawn-off horn. Back to the mermaid's rock they flew. She gladly gave some scales, and her sea snail friend allowed them to, connect, to collect their slimy trails. 
Zog said, I'm exhausted, but he flew and flew until... Bang, crash, thump, he landed on the bedroom window sill. Princess Pearl said thank you for the scales, the slime, the sneeze, and the horn, which then she grated up with half a pound of cheese. She tiptoed to her uncle's room. The king lay in his bed. She held a spoonful to his mouth. Now open wide, she said. After just one spoonful, her uncle felt much stronger. And after spoonful two, he wasn't orange any longer. After spoonful three, the king was dancing with delight. Princesses can be doctors. You were absolutely right. I'm sorry that I locked you up. Of course you must go free. But do come back to visit me and bring your friends to tea. Hooray, cried Pearl, and out she ran to join the other two. Then off into the sunset sped the flying doctor and his crew. So I hope you enjoyed those books. And the activity I want you guys to do today is to come up with your own magical cure. So you remember this crazy potion that she gives her uncle which involves the horn of a unicorn, a lion's sneeze, mermaid scales, slime from snails, and a pound of cheese, as you remember, or half a pound of cheese. So I want you guys to come up with your own wild magical cure for a magical illness. So you can write down the ingredients of your potion or you can draw them if you are not quite sure how to write the things that are in your potion and i also want you to write down what it's a cure for is in this case this was because her uncle had turned orange so maybe your magical cure is because someone can't stop saying the word snuffleupagus and is stuck saying it over and over every time they try to talk maybe your cure is for someone who can't stand the taste of pickles even though they used to love pickles. So think of a silly illness, something that's not real, just something fun and kind of silly, and come up with a magical potion. I hope you guys enjoyed this story time and that you enjoy the activity. Have a great day, everybody. Bye.